prosopagnosia, otherwise known as face blindness, is a neurological condition that impairs one's ability to recognize individuals by their faces, including faces belonging to loved ones and occasionally their own. Prosopagnosia can be classified into two different categories, congenital prosopagnosia or acquired prosopagnosia. Congenital prosopagnosia occurs from birth and has been genetically linked to some individuals. Acquired prosopagnosia is associated with trauma to the bilateral extrastriate visual cortex, specifically the fusiform gyrus. The fusiform gyrus specializes in face perception, activating specifically to visual images of the face. Trauma to this region as a result of brain injury or stroke can debilitate facial recognition. Individuals with acquired prosopagnosia learn to rely on other visual cues, such as clothing, voice, or physical mannerism. Acquired prosopagnosia can be further divided into two broad subtypes, aperceptive and associative. Aperceptive prosopagnosia affects a person's ability to identify the facial features or expressions associated with the structure of the face. This can make it difficult for a person to distinguish a person by gender or age. Associative prosopagnosia is less severe than aperceptive prosopagnosia. They can still recognize the structures of the face as well as identify age groups and genders, but they fail to associate the face with memories of previous encounters. Previous studies suggest that acquired prosopagnosia patients can't integrate facial features as a holistic representation. The absence or reduction of composite and whole part effects in a case of acquired prosopagnosia would provide strong evidence for holistic processing difficulties. Since most studies in acquired prosopagnosia involve testing of object recognition impairment, Raymond and colleagues wanted to assess holistic processing in a pure case of prosopagnosia to better understand face processing impairment. They hypothesized that patient PS, who suffers from a selective deficit of facial recognition and matching, would channel a given facial feature without the influence of other features of the whole face. Experiments 1 and 2 investigated holistic processing by means of the whole part paradigm. A target was presented, followed by two probe stimuli. Participants had to choose which one corresponded to the target. Facial feature proficiency would be greater if facial features are embedded in the facial context during the encoding and recognition stages. The control subjects benefited from the presence of contextual information for feature recognition. They were less efficient if the format changed across encoding and retrieval stages. These findings were thought to indicate holistic processing, which was not observed by PS. Experiments 3, 4, and 5 investigated holistic processing by means of the composite face effect. Each child consecutively displayed two composite stimuli of the same alignment, which was judged based on the top or bottom parts as either being the same or different. Matching and judging of a face part would be less efficient when it's aligned with a task-irrelevant counterpart. The composite effect was found for control subjects regardless of whether top or bottom parts were judged, but was not observed by PS. These results were replicated in Experiment 5, which allowed separating the effect of alignment from that of a change of identity. While all controls presented an interaction between identity and alignment, there is no evidence of such effects for PS. Regardless of the face part to be judged and the type of composite design used, they fail to find evidence for normal holistic processing in this case of acquired prosopagnosia. In 2011, Hollywood decided to portray prosopagnosia in the film, Faces in the Crowd. The following is a short audio clip of the trailer. What you're experiencing, face blindness. Every time you look at someone's face, it's as if you've never seen them before. Even someone close to you. Even your own reflection. Faces in the Crowd follows the life of Anna, a regular outgoing woman who had a boyfriend, two best friends, and a job as an elementary teacher. After she witnesses a murder rape, the killer attacks her, and she acquires a brain injury that caused her to have prosopagnosia. The film continues by showcasing her struggles with prosopagnosia as she tries to attain a normal life and escape a killer whose face she can't even remember. Action! The basic representation of prosopagnosia is accurate but the finer details are questionable. To show this, a compare and contrast will be presented. The similarities between the film and reality are as such. 
Anna sees these two pictures as two different people, when in reality it is the same person, but her prosopagnosia prevents her from recognizing the second picture as exactly the same. Who are you? It's Bryce. It's not Bryce. Don't you recognize us? She is unable to recognize her boyfriend or best friends whom she shared several experiences with. Also, there is a very powerful scene in the movie that shows when Anna looks in the mirror following her accident and does not recognize herself, and is understandably frightened in the straw as a result. Another similarity is that Anna uses cues, such as clothing and hair, to identify her friends, and this is a common method for people suffering from prosopagnosia to react. There are several discrepancies in the film. Anna is struck by the metal bar directly in the back of her head, but the psychologist simply explains that prosopagnosia is caused by a lesion in the temporal lobe. But in reality, according to the study conducted by Buzik Nia Al when he reported on 13 cases of prosopagnosia, that several different brain regions can be affected, such as the occipital and parietal lobes. The most notable of the differences is that Anna shows symptoms of associative and aperceptive prosopagnosia. For a refresher, associative is the inability to match faces to memory, like when she is unable to recognize her friends and boyfriend, and aperceptive is the inability to understand faces, like when she can't understand the killer's face when she is first injured, and also when she can't remember his face during her dreams. However, we could not find research that supported that a subject could have both subtypes of acquired prosopagnosia because of how different they are in severity. Therefore, we are unsure of whether or not this depiction of Anna is entirely accurate. Also, the neuropsychologist performs hypnosis on Anna, hoping that it will unlock the memory of the killer that Anna had reportedly encountered on several times after she acquired her injury. We are also unsure if the ability to recognize faces in dreams is accurate because of the lack of research found in the particular topic within prosopagnosia. To summarize, prosopagnosia is a cognitive disorder highlighted by an individual's inability to recognize faces. Effects and severity vary from person to person as there are subtypes such as congenital, acquired and within acquired, aperceptive and associative prosopagnosia. Though there hasn't been much research in this field, more research is being conducted to better understand how exactly face perception and processing abilities and limitations are linked. As stated, the film Faces in the Crowd does represent the basics, but is overly dramatized and romanticized for entertainment, not putting into account the various ways that people can be affected by this severely life-altering cognitive disorder.